the markets are fluid. You have to you have to be ready for changes. And so again, I do my best to guide you guys. I do my best to give you everything that's up here. I'm trying to give to you guys out there. And again, it's not going to be perfect. Analysis by nature is is somewhat subjective, but I'm using data. I'm using charts to be as accurate as I can. But understand that everything I talk about is probability based. It means that sure, I have a track record of 70 to 80% win rate. That still means two to three out of every 10 signals that I talk about, I could be wrong on. So that's why position size matters. I don't go into position size a lot, but diversify, diversify, diversify. The most money I started to make was when I stopped putting a ton of money in one trade and actually diversified. It protected the downside because when I did have those big losers, it wasn't wiping out my account. And instead, the winners consistently built. Building, building, building. And then again, the compounding factors play a role. And that's how success is made. The thought process is very simple. If yields are going to pull back, if the dollar is going to pull back, we likely see a market bounce in the short term. Bitcoin yesterday, not much price action on Bitcoin here. We just have this continued consolidation. I continue to be generally bullish on Bitcoin. Bitcoin dominance continues to advance. Um, the short term, I still think you could potentially move up there. Again, if it breaks this trend line. Recent turmoil in the Middle East has triggered a roller coaster ride for Bitcoin's price. It initially retreated from the $28,000 mark, sparking speculation about its future trajectory. A noteworthy indicator is the drop in the creation of new Bitcoin addresses, hitting a four month low on October 8. This suggests waning interest and could pose challenges in attracting fresh investors. Global uncertainties related to the Middle East crisis appear to be driving non-crypto native investors towards more traditional safe haven assets. If this trend continues, it might weaken Bitcoin's market demand in the near future. However, crypto investors are showing a renewed interest in Bitcoin, especially as the Middle East crisis escalates. Bitcoin dominance, BTCD, reflecting Bitcoin's share of the cryptocurrency market, has exceeded 51%, hinting at growing confidence in Bitcoin as a store of value. This could potentially fortify Bitcoin's price and bolster its crucial support level at $25,000. Even reaching $30,000 is feasible if the trend persists. However, it must first overcome resistance at $29,000. In the unpredictable world of crypto, market sentiment can change rapidly and even crypto-savvy investors may contribute to sudden price reversals. Let's continue our enlightening discussion with Gareth Soloway. Oil, the pop was awesome. We got it so quickly. I said, you know what? I'm not going to get greedy. We took that off the table. That was a nice win. We're seeing oil pulling back just a little bit. My general prognosis for oil is going to be the bounce. Maybe it goes as high as here like we've talked about. And then I think it dumps out to the downside. All right, next up, let's take a look at gold. Gold, my golden child here, guys. Gold having a wonderful day uh, yesterday. Pulling back a little bit here on gold. Again, for me, in general, um, I would just say, oh, this is still oil, I apologize. There's your gold chart here. So here's your gold chart. What a move yesterday, guys, in the last couple days. This is going to be your short-term resistance on gold. What you do is you take this pivot low here, connected to that pivot low, and we probably short-term have upside to about 1880, and then this chart is going to struggle. All right, now, if it can get through 1880, you go to the high end of this down-sloping channel, and we see if it can break out. Now, I am still very longer-term bullish. Again, remember, time frames matter here. If you go to your monthly chart, it's an amazing chart setup, weekly as well. Shorter term, you have to respect the resistance lines on the daily chart. The daily chart gives you a readout for the next few days to a week or so, while the weekly chart gives you the next, let's say, month, month and a half. The monthly chart gives you like the next six months out. All right, that's how you analyze time frames. And a lot of you probably don't know that, about time frames, but it is very important. Notice here, the dollar is slightly lower today. The trend line has worked like an absolute beauty, right? If we flip over to our monthly chart, actually, let's go to our weekly chart here. We can see this trend line going all the way back here. Look at that trend line. This is a long-term trend line going from 2021. Kisses it right here, kisses it right here. That's a weekly topping tail on the daily chart. So again, excuse me, on the weekly chart. So if I zoom in, and we zoom into this, I want you guys to see this. This, again, is a very important chart pattern or technical signal. So again, this candle, just like on the yield, that is a topping tail. Notice how it occurs right at that trend line. That tells you epic resistance, and until proven otherwise, probability is taken into account. 
until proven otherwise, which is how, how does a topping tail fail, guys? You have to close above the high on this time frame. So this would be a weekly close above for this, this candle to be negated. As long as you don't get that, what's the likely most probable outcome of the U.S. dollar? It is to continue to the downside overall. Now, again, this is the weekly chart. So you're looking out multiple weeks, obviously, on the price action. Okay, so that's a little tidbit there. I do want to just jump back to the daily chart because, again, per the daily chart, as we go to a shorter time frame, I want you guys to understand this, right? So if we look here at this chart where, you know, number one, you've had a top here, one, two, three, four, five. You're on your fifth pullback day in a row. I want to show you one thing. So we're on a, a smaller time frame. So remember how the 10-year yield on the big time frame, it's telling us down. But notice today, the 10-year is kind of bouncing back per that chart we looked at because on the daily, it's a much shorter movement time frame. On this chart, what's interesting here is you've had now five down days in a row in the dollar. Could the dollar be coming into some support? We'll take a look at this. This pivot high right here, you draw that line right across and you're getting very close to little short-term support. So what this tells us is that, granted, the bigger time frame, you are now bearish on the dollar, but in a very short amount of time, could you see a little bit of an uptick here off of this level? And the answer is yes. So this is your, your monthly chart. The reason I'm starting here is very simply, we have to be looking at the overall charts here to understand exactly what is going on. And so what we could clearly see is that the bigger time frame and the bigger time frame really gives us a good view of the bigger picture. Remember that, folks, you don't look at the 10 minute or the 15 minute or the 60 minute chart for a big view. You go to the weekly, the monthly, maybe the daily, depending on your time horizon. So we see very clearly here we have all of this as a level. Now, again, my thought process prior to this, and this is the amazing thing about it is. If you look at how the setups go as a swing trader, when we were trading up here on yields, when the dollar was into that level that we're going to look at just in a second, I was short the market. All right, I was heavily short the market. I have pared back those shorts and I've started to accumulate longs. So this is what a swing trader does. We swing back and forth depending on what the market is telling us based on the charts. Now, remember, the charts are probabilities, and that is what I'm here to tell you about and give you insight into. So we clearly see that we've pierced this level. So probabilities, yes, they continue to dictate that yields should potentially fall. We know that when yields pull back in the near term, generally the markets catch a bid. In the traditional financial realm, TV personality and financial advisor Jim Cramer is offering a cautious view of Bitcoin. Cramer is generally skeptical of cryptocurrencies and he expressed reluctance to invest in Bitcoin. His comments imply concerns about Bitcoin's potential decline, although the reference to Mr. Bitcoin remains cryptic. Craig then delve into a discussion about billionaires and historical figures like Vladimir Lenin and Leon Trotsky, painting the current economic era as perilous. He stresses his role in providing investment advice even in challenging circumstances. Kramer's historical skepticism and the ongoing regulatory scrutiny in the United States influence his cautious stance on Bitcoin. Despite this, Bitcoin's price remains stable above $27,000, reflecting a dynamic between short- and long-term investors. That wraps up today's crypto news highlights. Stay tuned for more updates, insights, and analysis from the world of cryptocurrencies. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content.